This simple powder melts fat, builds muscle, and rewires your brain. Oh no, it's not a supplement. It's a super weapon. And you wanna add it to your morning cup of coffee and watch what happens next. And make sure you stick to the end because I'll share my exact coffee protocol with it, the dosage, and who should avoid creatine. Here's what creatine actually does inside of your body and why your mitochondria love it. Think of creatine as your cell's energy buffer. You've heard of the mitochondria before. When you have healthy, functioning mitochondria, those mitochondria, these are batteries that produce energy called ATP. The more energy you produce, the more calories you burn, the more energy you have, the better you're going to feel. Creatine helps to recycle ATP within the mitochondria, which is essentially recharging those batteries, especially during high demand moments like exercise, lifting a weight, sprinting, or even heavy cognitive load. The ISSN stand position calls creatine monohydrate the most effective, well-researched aid for power and lean mass. But here's the cool thing, the brain actually stores creatine. Under stress, whether that's work or relationship or life stress, poor sleep, intense thinking through a lot of daily activities and tasks at work, topping up that energy buffer can improve your productivity and mood. Yeah, this is why creatine isn't just for the gym bros out there. It's a mitochondrial tool for muscle and neurons. I talk a lot about the value of building lean muscle mass. The more lean muscle mass you have, the more calories your metabolism will burn just sitting on the couch. It increases your energy output, which then means you burn more body fat. And when you have more lean muscle mass, you are going to be more insulin sensitive. The number one cause for weight gain and weight loss resistance is insulin resistance, meaning high levels of insulin. The more muscle mass you have, it acts like a sponge to absorb glucose so your body, especially your pancreas, specifically your pancreas, doesn't have to produce as much insulin, meaning you could get away with eating carbohydrates. You could get away with not exercising as much when you have more muscle mass because you're going to absorb the glucose as a energy source. Well, creatine is one of the best things you can do to preserve and build lean muscle mass. Several studies show creatine in combination with resistance training consistently increases lean mass in high intensity performance versus just training alone without creatine supplementation. And here's a fascinating study in younger adults. A meta-analysis showed the following. A small drop in body fat percentage with those doing creatine and lifting weights versus those just lifting weights without creatine. And in older adults, it also showed similar findings. So you'll train harder, recover better, and gain muscle faster. And that upgrades your resting metabolism. All right, what about brain health? brain fog, and mood. Well, creatine plays a huge role here. A 2024 systematic review slash meta-analysis found creatine may improve memory, attention, and processing speed, particularly when brains are stressed or in older adults. This means if you have a heavy workload, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business person, heck, if you just have a lot of daily tasks, and or if you are an older adult, creatine is an absolute must for brain function. If you struggle with memory issues, remembering people's names, brain fog, insert creatine, and it could resolve a lot of those symptoms. And if your sleep is not optimal, well, first of all, let's get it optimal. But let's say you had a poor night of sleep, which happens from time to time. Well, creatine plays a big role here. Human studies show that creatine improves mood and executive tasks after 24 hours of sleep deprivation. A 2024 randomized study showed that even a single dose of creatine enhanced cognitive performance and brain energy markers during a 21 hour sleep deprivation protocol. What about mood disorders like depression? Well, creatine could play a benefit here as well. Studies suggest creatine can actually improve depressive symptoms. This is because creatine plays a crucial role with the mitochondria. We already established that, but here's what I want you to know. Your brain has the highest concentration of mitochondria per cell. Let's put this in perspective. Most cells in your body have maybe a few hundred to a few thousand mitochondria. The cells inside of your body that are the most important, most needed for survival, most needed for reproduction, most metabolically active, have the highest concentration of mitochondria, the brain being the highest. There are actually regions in your brain that have over a million mitochondria in a single cell. 
So it's gonna be the cells that have the most mitochondria that benefit from creatine the most, the brain cells, the eyes, the heart, the ovaries, the testicles. These are the most metabolically active cells that have the most mitochondria. Now, what about jet lag? And let's continue the conversation here on poor sleep when, and creatine. Well, if you travel a lot like I do, jet lag could be something that you need to deal with. It's not fun. Some of my favorite hacks to overcome jet lag is to stay hydrated on the plane with non-flavored electrolytes. I don't eat on the plane, I stay fasted. And then when I get off that plane, I put my feet on the bare earth and I ground. Something else I do, I take my creatine with me. This is why. I've noticed a huge difference when I supplement with creatine when I'm traveling versus when I forget to bring my creatine. And it almost always eliminates all of my jet lag or helps it improve tremendously. So here is my personal protocol when I travel that I'll share with you. The night before I travel, I'll take five to 10 grams of creatine monohydrate. The morning of my travel, I'll take five grams of creatine in either my cup of coffee or with water first thing in the morning. Then when I land at my destination, I'll drink, I'll take another five grams of creatine with water. So that's 10 grams on the travel day. The following day, I'll take five grams of creatine and I'll take that throughout my trip. Now, can you put in your coffee on a daily basis? Well, I sure do. You see, creatine monohydrate is a very stable form, even in dry form even at elevated temperatures like a hot cup of coffee or even tea. Now, some older studies have hinted that caffeine may blunt creatine's effects, but broader studies show mixed reviews. So overall, there's no consistent uh, consensus here. Warm liquids actually dissolve creatine better, so you could even stir a small amount in a warm cup of water or drink it with your warm cup of coffee. Now, depending on your goals, here is the general recommendations for creatine that I suggest to my students. Three to five grams per day is a general rule of thumb to follow, and you wanna take that for weeks and months. It will really saturate your cells with, with creatine. Now, if you want faster results and faster saturation, here's what I would recommend. Here's what I personally do as well. On the days that I work out, I train, I play basketball, that I'm active, I'll take about 10 to 15 grams of creatine. On the days that I don't train, I'll take five to 10 grams of creatine. All right, keep in mind, I am a man and I'm six foot two. If you are a woman who's five foot five or below, you might wanna take five to 10 grams of creatine on a training day and about five grams of creatine on a non-training day. Now keep in mind, creatine pulls water into muscle. So on the days that you take creatine, which essentially is every single day, you wanna increase your fluid intake and increase your sodium, potassium, and minerals appropriately, especially if you train in hot environments like I do here in Miami. So here's some other creative ways to use your creatine on a daily basis. You could have it as a coffee stack. Add three to five grams of creatine in your cup of coffee. You could have it on the travel days. I, I already explained how to do that. You could have it during your training window. If workouts are intense, Put three to five grams of creatine in your pre, post, or during workout drink. If you don't drink caffeine like coffee or tea, simply mix creatine with warm water, herbal tea, or an electrolyte solution. Now let's discuss the safety side effects, who should skip it, etc. Look, there are thousands of studies on creatine, and most of them generally say creatine is safe for most healthy adults. Now the most common side effects are going to be brief GI upset, especially if you load too fast. So you might wanna start with two grams a day and work your way up to five, et cetera. As you do that, you also wanna increase your electrolytes and your hydration. What about the kidneys? Well, creatine can raise serum creatinine, which is a breakdown product, but it does this usually without harming the kidneys. Now that can confuse lab tests. So if you're gonna get some kidney markers done, you want to probably avoid creatine for 48, 72 hours prior to the test. If you are concerned because you have a history or a current kidney disease, or if you take medication, I would highly suggest you speak to your doctor before you get on creatine. Now, there are some rare cases of some issues for those that have bipolar disorder. Again, work with your clinician on this. And if you're under 18, pregnant or breastfeeding, and the evidence is, is limited here. So speak to your healthcare practitioner about this. There are different forms of creatine. Creatine monohydrate is the most studied. It's the form that I use. It's the most reliable and cost-effective. It's really not expensive. I will include a link in the notes of this 
podcast episode for the creatine monohydrate powder that I use every single day. Just click down below for that link. Does it dehydrate you? Does creatine dehydrate you? No. If anything, it increases total body weight. So if you step on the scale, it's day or the day after the week you start taking creatine, you, you might notice that scale go up, but don't be alarmed. You're not gaining fat. It's temporary water weight. Typically people see one to three pounds increase from intracellular water weight. Not an issue. Don't be concerned. Stick with it. I'll get to some more questions here that you submitted on this topic of creatine. Before I do, I want to give you a free resource, which is going to be my burn fat ebook. You could follow these three easy steps to lose 10 pounds in seven days. You could read this ebook in less than 30 minutes and I'll give it to you for free. If you scan the QR code on the screen or go to burnfatbook.com or click the link in the notes down below, you can download that free ebook. And I'm doing a speaking tour for my latest book, Metabolic Freedom where I'll be doing keynote lectures across the US, the Middle East. We're adding dates every single month. I'd love to meet you in person. We're doing book signings, meet and greets at these events as well. So if you head over to benazadi.com slash events, you can see where I'm speaking next. And I hope to see you in person and give you a big hug. Now let's get to the remainder of your questions. Can women benefit from creatine in the same way men do? And is the dosage the same? I kind of already addressed this. Men typically take about 10 to 15 grams of creatine per day. Women are going to be around 5 to 10 grams. That's just a general recommendation. Is creatine safe for people over 60 who are trying to prevent muscle loss? I would say this is even more important for those over 40, 50, and especially 60 to prevent sarcopenia, muscle loss. Combine that with strength training, and it's going to work wonders for you. How long does it take to notice the benefits of creatine, the effects of creatine on strength and conditioning? Mm, it's different for everyone. For me, it took about six weeks to start noticing my strength in uh, within my strength training workouts. Is it better to take creatine before or after a workout for maximum benefit? So I take five grams of creatine in the morning with my coffee, and then I typically work out midday and I'll have another five grams of creatine right before the workout. And then on that day that I'm strength training or having high intensity exercise, I'll take another five grams of creatine later in the afternoon. Should creatine be cycled on and off or can you take it year round? If you followed my work, you know I'm a big fan of cycling, rotating supplements going on and off. There are some exceptions though. Creatine is one of those exceptions. Actually, you get more benefits staying on it consistently, even long term. Again, monitor your kidney markers, make sure you're staying hydrated, make sure you do it the right way. And it's actually safe and effective long term. A lot of the studies verify that as well. Can creatine be used alongside intermittent fasting without breaking the fast? Yeah. It does not break your fast. Great news. So you could have it during your fasting window and you could have it during your feeding window. Doesn't matter. Hope this is valuable. Share it with somebody you know. Leave it a rating and review if you're listening on the podcast. And I'll see you in the next lesson. And if you love this lesson, you want to learn more about the number one exercise to lose belly fat easily. Combine what you learned about creatine and your creatine. Take that dosage every day and follow this number one exercise and you'll get amazing results. Here's a clip from that video I just published, then click the video on the screen and I'll see you in the next lesson. The best part about what I'm gonna share with you today, it does not require willpower, you don't have to count calories, and as a matter of fact, one of the worst ways to lose weight and belly fat is to focus on calories. It's the biggest mistake people make. Focusing on calories is a huge mistake. For example, you could,